All right, hello everybody. Welcome, welcome to Constellation Yoga. We are so excited. We're gonna give people about another minute to join us. Um, but while we are waiting, you can make sure that you have all of your yoga supplies ready. You can grab a yoga mat or you know towel, whatever you're using. You might just be using the floor. Um, you can do some stretches. And you can let us know in the chat what your favorite yoga pose is or maybe what your favorite constellation is. And we have Linda here as our, our expert yoga practitioner. Linda, what is your favorite constellation? My favorite constellation, we're gonna learn about it today. It's the Orion constellation. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, and Hugo's favorite is Gemini. Um, Carrie's favorite yoga pose is crow and favorite constellation is monoceros. I don't actually know that one. Oh, Jamie's favorite is the big dipper. Nice. That's, that's one of the few that I can actually like identify outside. All right. And we still have a few people joining. So go ahead. If you just joined us, um, we can type into the chat and let us know what your favorite yoga pose is, or maybe your favorite constellation. Um, let's see, Janet's favorite is Scorpio. That's another good Ooh, one. Ooh, nice. That's a good one. Make sure you've got your yoga supplies ready. Your stretchy pants are on. Oh, Skelly's favorite yoga pose is the Cobra. Ooh. And Jed, yes, this is real yoga. We are going to learn about constellations, but we're also going to learn some yoga poses. So yeah, this is a full practice full yoga practice. And it's okay if you don't have supplies. That's kind of the nice thing about yoga is that, you know, you can just do it anywhere, right? Maybe not like on top of water, unless you can float on water, but. Unless you're on a stand-up paddleboard and doing stand-up paddleboard Oh yoga. yeah, yeah. Oh, we have another favorite for um, Orion. Nice. And Lion, yeah. All right, well, we still have a few people joining us, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So hello everybody, welcome again to Constellation Yoga. My name is Laura Beth and I'm gonna be your host. Um, and we have Linda here, of course, to share the yoga practice with us. So just, um, just so you know, the program is being recorded. Recordings are gonna be available later. So we do ask that you keep your uh, microphones turned off and that you keep your cameras turned off. Um, and if you have any questions throughout the practice, you know, we do hope that you're actually doing the yoga and following along with us. But if you have any questions, you can always type into the chat. Um, and if you have technical issues, you can type into the chat. We have plenty of staff here behind the scenes who can help you out. Um, all right. Well, with that, I'm going to let Linda take it away. Excellent. Thank you, Laura Beth. So, like Laura Beth mentioned, my name is Linda, and I am actually in education at the Museum of Natural Sciences, but I'm also a yoga practitioner. So I'm joining you today, bringing two of my favorite things together. In fact, that word yoga means to join together. So today's program is all about the Orion story. As I mentioned to some of you that might have been on early, that's my favorite constellation. So the Orion story is going to kind of unravel as we do some yoga poses. And Laura Beth will be sharing information while I go through those yoga poses with you. But it's really important while practicing yoga that you're really listening to your body. So if you're doing something that doesn't feel right or that hurts, please back out of that pose or release out of that pose all together and there's three big places where you really want to make sure it's okay and that would be your neck you don't want to ever hurt or strain your neck or feel pain there your back and your knees those are three big ones all right so to start with we're actually going to come down onto the floor into a comfortable cross-legged position so join me down on the floor we're going to start with what's very important some warm-up stretches so once you're nice and comfortable Bring your palms up towards the sky, but fingertips are going to touch the earth, okay? And for this, we're going to take a big inhale, bring those arms up, look up towards the sky, reach up with your hands towards the stars, and then when you're ready, exhale those hands back down. And as you come down, you're going to 
plant one of those hands right onto the earth, reach and side stretch over with the other arm. Take a big deep inhale and then bring that hand down, plant it to the earth, reach and side stretch over on the other side. So nice long side stretch. And then a big inhale up. Now we're gonna keep doing that, so just follow along with me and Laura Beth's gonna start telling us about constellations. All right, y'all, so what is a constellation? Well, a constellation is made up of stars, which in this picture you can see a star, our sun, up close. Stars are big, big balls of hot gas. And so, you know, they're really hot. They're really, really bright. They burn so bright in the sky that even though uh, we, they're really far away from us, we can see them at night. Um, but when they're really far away, they just look like these dots in the sky, right? So we can connect the dots to make these star pictures. And that's exactly what a constellation is, a star picture. So you have probably heard of the Big Dipper and you can maybe look at this picture and try to point out the Big Dipper. Um, and I will show you what it looks like. Um, the Big Dipper is a group of stars that actually looks like a Big Dipper or a big spoon or ladle. So here when we connect the dots, we can see that long handle. And here's the spoony part down there at the end. Awesome, thank you, Laura Beth. So another exhale, bring those hands down to the floor. All right, I happen to have a Big Dipper with me today. This is my handy dandy soup ladle. So you can see that long handle ending in a big ladle or spoon. So that's what we're gonna move into first is Big Dipper pose. So you guys feel free to stay facing your camera so you can watch me. I'm gonna go ahead and turn sideways on my mat so you have a little bit better view. All right, so you're gonna to come to a seated position and knees are gonna be bent out in front, feet are on the floor. You can bring those hands to the floor behind you and then roll open those shoulders, press out through the chest, really lengthen the spine, nice and tall and strong. And to come into Big Dipper Pose, we're gonna grab right behind our knees and then lean back and bring our legs up. Don't we look just like a Big Dipper? So if you wanna keep challenging yourself, you can let go of the hands and bring those up. Otherwise, we're gonna hold this for a few deep breaths. So keep breathing. Our breath is gonna tell us a little bit more about constellations. Hold and breathe. All right, and this one is a tricky pose. Um, so there are about 88 constellations, official constellations that is. Over half of them were named by this guy right here, Ptolemy, um, and he was an ancient mathematician and astronomer. So a long time ago, people actually used stars to help them navigate. And so being able to create these star pictures and give them names, that helps people remember which star they're actually looking at. So awesome. You guys can go ahead and release out. If you want to do something fun, you can release out by rolling backwards on your spine and then come back up to a seated position. Join me back in a cross-legged position here. So imagine being an ancient sailor out in the middle of the ocean on a boat and you don't have a cell phone or a GPS unit or anything like that. So ancient sailors use the stars to navigate. So it's kind of like a map. So we use road maps to find our way around like Raleigh or anywhere else. And so we can look at the map and it even tells us which directions which. So which way is north? Oh, here we go. North is that way on this map. So the stars in those pictures, the constellations, make up a giant nighttime map. So sailors could look up and find what direction they're going. So we're gonna make our way up to a standing position, but to do so, first we're gonna come into a deep squat. So come on to the balls of your feet here. Knees are bent. They can have their knees nice and wide. Hands can come down to the floor. And then we're gonna straighten those legs. But as we do that, we're gonna drop our chin towards our chest and let our head hang, let our hair hang. And we're gonna begin to straighten those legs. Hands can stay on the floor. You can begin to let go and just come into a nice deep forward bend or forward fold. And then from here, keep letting your head hang, your hair hang 
and rounding up one vertebrae at a time from the spine all the way up one bone at a time through your backbone. The head will be the last thing that comes up. Ah, good, well, welcome to standing. So now we're gonna make our way into North Star Pose. So for this one, we're gonna need to step our feet really wide. So you can either come into a wide angle step with your feet by simply stepping those legs apart, or you can take a big, big inhale and join me in jumping those feet apart, ready? Jump, excellent. So now arms are out in T position. So you're lengthening out through those fingertips. We're a big five pointed star. So our fingers on each hand, our feet and our heads are our five pointed North Star. So North Stars are full of energy. So send that energy out through your fingertips down through the soles of your feet and out through the crown of your head. The navel is in towards the spine and take some full deep breaths here. We're gonna hear what else Laura Beth has to share with us. And you can stay right here or you can start to add some side stretches. So while y'all are making your North Star poses, I can show you how to actually find the North Star in real life outside. You have to find the Big Dipper first. Right, so in this picture, here's that long handle and here's that big dipper. If we follow the bottom edge of the dipper's ladle, we go doot, 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 doot. bingo, here's the North Star. And once you've found the North Star, you can actually figure out all of the other directions, south, east, west, where are they? Once you found the North Star, you know. All right, and next up, Take a big deep inhale, bring those arms up, and then jump or step those feet back together on your exhale. Perfect, nice, big, strong North Stars. So, their next picture that Laura Beth is gonna put up is my favorite constellation. As I already shared with you, that would be the Orion constellation. So do we have a picture of that, Laura? Yeah, yeah, up right here. Of course, it's hard to see before you connect the dots, right? You want me to connect the dots? But Orion, like the Big Dipper, is kind of easy to find in the nighttime sky. You simply have to face south. We already know where north is, right? So you face south and look along the horizon. Now, you can only see Orion in the winter months. So right now is the perfect time of year to look for Orion out in the nighttime sky. And you want to look for those three main dots that go one, two, three. So we're going to take a look at that picture again. Yep, one, two, three of its belt. That's the Orion's belt, Orion's famous belt that goes right across his waist. And then hanging from that belt is a row of fainter stars. You'll see those in a minute. And that's his sword hanging straight off of his belt. So take a look at that. Can you see that, Laura Beth? Yeah. And then from there, we're gonna also look for two big, bright, prominent stars that make Orion's shoulders right above that belt, and then two big, prominent stars below the belt that, that make his knees. So let's take a look at that pose, I mean, that, that picture again. Laura Beth, you want to point out those stars for us? Yeah, so I, I've been pointing them out. If y'all can give us a thumbs up in the chat if you see Orion's belt. Whoops. Right here, those are his shoulders, and here are his knees. Excellent. Perfect. All right, I'm getting some thumbs up. Excellent, good. And so Orion, now that we know um, kind of how to find Orion in the nighttime sky, um, he's often depicted holding a club. So we're going to go through some poses with Laura Beth as she talks through those. So just kind of follow along with me and you'll see some movements and some poses as we go through those. You're gonna start by bringing the feet hip distance apart right under those hips. Okay, so nice and strong and tall, really grow those roots through the feet. So feel that connection with the earth. 
and then let the arms just dangle at your sides for now. Navel is pulled in towards that Orion's belt. Okay, and stand here for a moment. And again, follow along with me as we hear a little bit more about Orion. All right, so we're gonna learn how Orion, the constellation actually got its name. A lot of constellations get their names from different stories. Old stories are myths that were told a long, long time ago. There are usually a lot of different versions of these stories. Um, they'll vary from culture to culture and between different places. The story that we're going to share with you today is actually from Greek mythology and it goes like this. So make sure that you're starting off in your strong mountain pose and then follow along with Linda. So Orion, as you can see here, was often uh, depicted as a mighty, mighty hunter, sometimes with a club raised overhead, sometimes with a sword. Well, again, sometimes it's a club, sometimes it's a sword. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he's wielding a shield over here, and sometimes carrying the head of a lion, which is depicted in this picture on the left. Regardless of how he's imagined, apparently Orion was quite full of himself. So much so that he once bragged that he was such a mighty hunter that he could kill all of the animals on Earth. Oh, that's not good. So Orion the mighty hunter was such a braggart, but he was also a mighty warrior. So we're going to move into some poses called warrior poses. I like to think of them as Orion poses. You guys can keep facing me on your camera, but I'm going to turn sideways on my mat to do these poses with you. So you have a little bit better view of what I am doing. Let me just straighten this mat out. All right. So for these poses, we're going to start back in that mountain pose. You're probably already there. Feet are about hip distance right underneath your hips. And your feet are nice and strong on the ground. We're going to have our hands on our hips to start with. And then on an inhale, we're going to bring those arms straight up overhead. So take a big, deep inhale, bring the arms up. Stand here for a moment, relax the shoulders. And now with that right foot, we're gonna take a big step forward, okay? And with that front knee, that front knee is gonna be bent. The back leg, you might actually wanna pick up your heel and then sink it into the ground so it's nice and strong. Again, draw that navel in towards your Orion's belt. All right, your arms are up. And then we're gonna take a big deep inhale and with our exhale, bring those arms out into T position. So our right hand is over our right knee and our left hand is back towards the back. Now add that Orion club in the back and the Orion shield or lion's pelt out front and hold this for just a breath or two. Nice and strong warrior pose or Orion the mighty hunter. Take a big deep inhale, bring those arms up and then exhale them back down to your hips. Take a big deep bend in that front knee and then step back nice and strong. Awesome, so that's one side. Now we need to do the other side. So I step my right foot forward. So this time I'm gonna step my left foot forward. So big step forward, that front knee is bent. That back knee, leg is really straight, press out through the back of your knee. Bring that heel up off of the floor and then sink it back down. Press that heel into the floor. And on your next inhale, bring those arms straight up overhead. Relax the shoulders. <sighs> Take another big deep inhale. And on your exhale, bring those arms out into T position again. That left hand is over that left knee now. That back hand is in the back. And add the Orion club and the Orion shield. So again, we're nice and strong warriors, navels in towards the spine, lengthening up through the crown of the head, nice and strong. Good job, you guys, awesome. Take a big deep inhale, we're gonna bring the arms up and exhale, hands back to our hips. And then take a nice bend in that front leg, inhale, and then step back on your exhale. All right, good job. So that's the Orion Mighty Hunter pose or warrior pose. Now we're gonna add a bit of a challenge for this pose. 
And we're gonna go into a balance, so warrior balance pose. So follow along with me again. Starting back in our nice stable mountain pose, find both of your feet right under your hips, hands on your hips, and step that right foot forward again, back into our warrior stance, nice and strong. For this one, again, it's a balance pose. So you wanna really kind of think about drawing on that energy, your warrior energy, bring all that energy towards your spine so you're nice and strong. And then you wanna fix your gaze somewhere out in front of you, either right out in front or maybe down on a spot on the floor. And that will help with your balance. So don't look around, but keep your head nice and straight and focus your gaze on the spot that you've chosen. For this one, we're going to bring all of our weight onto our front bent knee. So we're gonna come up onto the toes of our back foot, begin to shift our weight forward to that front foot, that back foot raises up off of the floor and you begin to tilt. You can either tilt a little or a lot. And if you're feeling really strong here, those arms can come out kind of like Superman arms, nice and strong. When you're ready to release, hands can come back to the hip, lower that back foot, woo, and then step back into your mountain pose again. Good job, you guys. Feeling a little wobbly there at the end. Now we're gonna do the other side, of course. We always have to do both sides in yoga so we don't end up all crooked. All right, so I had stepped my right foot forward. Now we're gonna step our left foot forward, okay? So nice big full length step. That front knee is bent again. Navel in towards the spine. Hug your Orion's belt around your waist. And then let's start with arms coming up this time. Relax those shoulders. Take some full deep breaths here and then begin to come onto the toes of that back foot, shifting your weight to your front leg. Begin to tilt forward, raising that back foot off of the ground. Again, tilting just a little or a lot. Full deep breaths, hold your gaze on that spot that you chose either straight out in front or down on the floor. Couple of breaths here, hold it. And then when you're ready, inhale, release back. And then step that back, that foot back to join your back foot. Great warrior poses, everyone. I hope you felt good in those and felt like a mighty warrior. So we're gonna take a little bit of a breather now and come back down to the floor in a comfortable cross-legged position. And Laura Beth's gonna continue our Orion story for us. So go ahead and come to a comfortable seated position. All right, back where we left off in our story. You may remember that Orion was bragging that he could kill all of the animals on earth. Well, this made Gaia, the goddess of earth and protector of all animals, very, very angry, as you can imagine. So she sent a giant scorpion to kill Orion before he harmed any animals. The scorpion attacked and stung Orion with its venomous stinging tail. As a reward for his bravery and for saving the lives of all of the animals, Gaia placed the scorpion in the night sky. She also placed Orion in the night sky, but they're not in the same place at the same time. So Orion's usually opposite from the scorpion. Pictured here is the scorpion constellation, which is known as Scorpius. And it's pretty hard to imagine getting a scorpion out of that picture, even though we have all of the dots connected with lines. So here is an artist rendition of the Scorpius, the scorpion, um, so that you can see what that star picture looks like even better. Excellent. So I think it's time, hopefully you've caught your breath from warrior poses. I think it's time for scorpion pose now. Now for scorpion pose, we're actually going to come onto our stomachs or our bellies. So make your way onto your mat or the floor, wherever you're practicing, and come onto your stomach. 
right? You want to have your legs, stretch them out behind you, nice and long. All right, and then the forehead is actually going to come to the floor. If you need to hold up for a moment and watch me so you know where we're going with this pose, you can do so and then join in. So we're going to come to bring the forehead to the floor and our arms are going to come back down alongside of us. All right, so we're going to start like this. Forehead's on the floor, arms are alongside, body's nice and long, okay? First of all, we're gonna plant the tops of our feet into the floor. So press those feet into the floor. And on our first inhale, we're gonna raise our shoulders and the top of our torso up, okay? Head needs to stay in alignment with the rest of the spine. So you're not looking down, you're not cranking your head up, but nice and long and hold that breath or two. See how high you can get. You can probably get higher than I can. Take a big inhale and then exhale back down. All right. Now we're going to add our scorpion pincers out front. So bring the arms out front. Okay. Get your pincers ready. Elbows are slightly bent. And again, arms are out front. Forehead starts on the floor. First of all, plant those feet, the tops of the feet into the floor, press into the floor. And on your inhale, when you're ready, inhale the torso and the shoulders up and you have your pinchers out, you can start to pinch. Okay, and then when you're ready, take an inhale and exhale it back down. Woo, good job. Now we need to do the back part of the scorpion. All right, so that's just the front end. So for our back end, we're going to bring our legs together, and this is going to end up being our stinger, okay? So for this, again, forehead comes to the floor, and then instead of raising our torso, we're going to raise our legs on the inhale. So forehead's on the floor, we're going to take a nice big deep inhale, and then begin to raise those legs up off of the floor. Feet are together, bend the knees into your stinger. Take a big inhale and then exhale back down. Now, we need to put all of this together for full scorpion pose, okay? So get your stinger ready, get your pincers ready, and we're gonna do four full scorpion pose. Okay, so arms are out front, forehead comes to the floor, legs are Stretched out behind with the feet together. On our inhale, raise the torso, raise the legs, bend the knees, have your pinchers going and your stinger going. And if Orion comes along, give him a big sting. Say, so get out of here, Orion. Don't kill all those animals. And then take another big inhale on your exhale. Huh, really. Full deep breath here. Whew. Exhale through the mouth. Inhale through the nose. And exhale through the mouth. Now press your way back up to a comfortable seated position. So you can come to any cross legged position that works for you. Okay. Great job, Linda. <laughs> And yeah. great job, everyone else being a scorpion. Y'all can, uh, if you're if you're doing yoga with a buddy, you can always um, have one person be Orion and one person be a scorpion, right? Because Orion is actually being chased in the sky by Scorpius. So remember, we said that they're in the sky at different times of the year, right? So in the uh, the Scorpius constellation is best seen in the southern sky during the summer months, usually July and August is the best time to look for it. Whereas Orion constellation is best seen in the winter months. Still, they're both seen in the southern sky, but they're never overlapping, right? So it is said that Scorpius is constantly chasing Orion across the sky all throughout the year. Orion is allowed to hunt peacefully in the winter time, but as spring comes, Scorpius rises and once again chases Orion out of the sky. Okay, so I have darkened my room a bit 
although it doesn't look very dark in here. And I have a giant scorpion with me. This one's not real. So, but what I wanted to show you about scorpions is that they're actually related to spiders. So you all may recall that spiders are those animals with eight legs. Scorpions also have eight legs. They're in the group of animals called arachnids. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight legs. In addition to those eight legs, remember in our scorpion pose, we added pincers. They have pincers out front. And then if we take a look sideways, they have this nice curled tail ending in a venomous stinger. Now scorpions and the spiders as well as, and those are the arachnids along with mites, they are in a bigger group of animals called arthropods. Now all of the arthropods, and that includes insects, it's a huge group of animals, insects, arachnids, crustaceans like crabs and lobsters, millipedes and centipedes, they all have what's called an exoskeleton. So instead of having bones on the inside of their body, they have a hard outer shell as their skeleton. So exoskeleton means outside skeleton. So <clears throat> it's kind of like wearing a suit of armor basically. And so as that animal, that arthropod grows, they're gonna have to shed or molt that outside skeleton, their exoskeleton in order to get bigger. And so those, that's common, uh, that's actually part of being an arthropod. Another part is having these jointed appendages as well. Now, the cool thing about a scorpion though, is that its exoskeleton will actually glow or fluoresce under UV light. Now the sunshine naturally has UV light or radiation, but I've got a special flashlight here that also has that UV light. So I've got a scorpion in a box here and I'm gonna hold it up and see if you guys can actually kind of see that scorpion. Right. Yeah, we can. It's a little dark, but, but we can kind of see it. Yeah. Okay, so it's a black scorpion. So this one's an emperor scorpion. And <laughs> this one is not alive, okay. So this one is a dead emperor scorpion, no longer living, but it is real. It's just not alive anymore. Now, the cool thing is, remember I was talking about that exoskeleton. I've got my handy dandy light here. And so I'm gonna turn it on to that special UV light and we're gonna see if, can show it glow. Ah, there we go. Can you guys see that? <laughs> Let me switch hands. <clears throat> I think I can do this better this way. All right. Oh, you can see it. It's very bright. It's like, it's crazy. That, like a, it's like it's covered in, in highlighter fluid. <laughs> yeah, like a greenish yellow highlighter. Yeah. It's so crazy cool. Now, now <clears throat> scorpions are nocturnal. So scientists don't know exactly why their exoskeletons glow. And they glow when they're alive, they glow when they're dead, they glow when they've shed their exoskeletons. But they think that because scorpions are nocturnal, they don't have eyes the way that we have eyes. And so this may help them sense whether or not the sun is out or a really bright moon is out. So if they're hiding under cover during the day and they begin to make their way out at nighttime to go hunting, they don't wanna be seen by other predators, like let's say an owl or something like that. And so they might make their way out and if it's still daytime and their exoskeleton fluoresces, then they'll scamper away and go hide back in their hiding place. So that's just a theory or a hypothesis about why their exoskeleton glows like this. So I just think scorpions are pretty cool animals. And I hope that you enjoyed hearing about and learning about the scorpion and the Orion constellation. 
So that's all I have for you today, but tomorrow we're gonna continue the story with more about Orion and some of his friends. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Laura Beth now and have her do a little wrap up. But I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed it. And come and see more for Astronomy Days. There's plenty more coming up all the way through Saturday. Or no, Sunday. Yeah, yeah, through Sunday, we'll have Astronomy Days programming, um, including Constellation Yoga Part 2. So remember, today we learned about Orion's worst enemy, but tomorrow we're going to learn a different yoga routine, and we're going to learn about Orion and his friends. So we hope that you can join us tomorrow. Um, we'll put a link into the chat that has um, all of the programs for all of Astronomy Days, including recordings of the programs that have already happened earlier this week. So um, thank you so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed the yoga routine. Um, again, you can always go back and watch the routine later if you missed part of it or you know didn't have your yoga mat ready. Um, thank you so much for attending. Thank you to North Carolina Space Grant for making virtual astronomy days happen. And thank you to our Friends of the Museum members who support us every single day. If you want some astronomy gear to help remember this awesome virtual event, you can go online to our website. We've got some hoodies, we've got some cool t-shirts available as well. Um, and if you are a Friends member, you can get a 10% discount. So with that, thank you again for joining us and have a great day. Bye. Bye.